Welcome to William & Mary Law School's Veterans Benefits Clinic channel. The videos on this channel are made by law school students and professors working in the Veterans Benefits Clinic at William & Mary Law School in Williamsburg, Virginia. This channel is not affiliated with the United States Department of Veterans Affairs. The information provided in these videos should not be considered legal advice applicable to your specific situation. The purpose of these videos is to give you general information about the veterans' benefits process and common sense suggestions on working within the VA to seek compensation. For more information about the Veterans Benefits Clinic, please visit our website at law.wm.edu slash veterans. Hello, my name is Mimi and I will be introducing you to the second video in a series of videos that is designed to provide helpful information about the Veterans Affairs Claims Process. The videos are made in conjunction with the Veterans Benefits Clinic at the William & Mary School of Law and are not affiliated with the United States Department of Veterans Affairs. The purpose of this video is to explain who is eligible for disability benefits from the VA. It is important to keep in mind that eligibility is a prerequisite for applying for disability benefits, but does not by itself make a valid claim. How to actually file a claim will be covered by later videos in this series. You can think of eligibility as identifying who is allowed to submit claims for benefits from the VA, who qualifies for veterans' benefits. In order to be eligible to submit a claim for benefits, the person filing the claim must be one of the following, a veteran, dependent of a veteran, or a survivor of a veteran. In this video, we will focus on answering the question, who is a veteran? Figuring out whether a person is a survivor or a dependent of a veteran becomes far easier once you identify whether the related person is a veteran for VA disability benefits purposes. So how does someone prove veteran status to get benefits? Well, he must show the following things. First, that he was on active duty. Second, his time of service and third, that he was discharged under conditions other than dishonorable. Let's approach each of these in turn. What is active duty? Active duty includes all the following categories. Full-time duty in the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, or Air Force. It also includes full-time duty for the Coast Guard, with one important exception. Unlike the other service branches, your training is not included in active service. Some civilians may also be considered to be on active duty if they serve as a commissioned officer in the following organizations. The Public Health Service, the National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration, the National Environmental Science Services Administration. Active duty also includes service as a cadet in one of these academies, the military, Air Force, Coast Guard, or Naval Academies. Active duty can also include authorized travel to or from duty or service at any of the categories just discussed. A person can also have veteran status if, during training, he suffers from death resulting from an injury incurred or aggravated in the line of duty, myocardial arrest, cardiac arrest, or a cerebrovascular incident. After establishing that the person was on active duty, the second thing that must be shown is that the person served for some period of time. In general, there is no minimum time required for a person to serve on active duty to be considered a veteran for disability compensation. If a person was injured on active duty, whether it was on his first day of service or his 366th day of service, he may be considered a veteran and may be eligible for disability compensation benefits. After a person has established that he was on active duty for some period of time, he must also prove that he was discharged under conditions other than dishonorable. Those are the words in the VA regulations. However, anyone who has served on active duty knows that the military does not give out discharges named other than dishonorable. Currently, possible discharges include honorable, general under honorable conditions, other than honorable, bad conduct discharge, and dishonorable discharge. For the most part, the VA will grant disability benefits to veterans with honorable and general under honorable conditions discharges, with some exceptions. For those veterans with other than honorable discharges, disability benefits are not automatically granted, and a review of the veteran's service may be conducted. Even if a person might otherwise be eligible for benefits, there may be other statutory bars to eligibility. Some of the circumstances barring a veteran from being eligible for benefits are 
First, if the former service member was a conscientious objector who, after refusing certain orders, was discharged from the service. Second, when the service member was released from active duty as a result of the sentence of a general court-martial. Third, if the service member was an officer who resigned for the good of the service. Fourth, if the service member deserted from active duty. Fifth, if the service member was an alien who sought to be discharged in a time of hostility. In addition to the previously stated bars to benefits, the following are also bars to eligibility for benefits. Sixth, if the service member was discharged from conditions other than honorable because the service member was AWOL. However, this condition may not be a bar to eligibility if the Board of Veterans' Appeals determines that there are compelling circumstances that warranted the service member going AWOL. Seventh, if the VA determines that the injury or disease that the service member is claiming benefits for was the result of willful misconduct. Willful misconduct involves a deliberate or intentional wrongdoing with a knowledge or wanton and reckless disregard of the probable consequences. Willful misconduct may also involve intentional wrongdoing or prohibited action. Eighth, if the disease or injury that the service member is claiming benefits for was the result of alcohol abuse sufficient to cause disability over time or death, then the disease or injury may be deemed to be the result of willful misconduct. Finally, if the disease or injury that the service member is claiming benefits for was the result of drug abuse, then the disease or injury may be deemed to be the result of willful misconduct. The VA defines drug abuse broadly to include not only the use of illegal drugs, but also the use of a prescription drug illegally or illicitly obtained, the use of a drug for a purpose other than that for which it was intended, or the use of a drug other than alcohol to enjoy its intoxicating effect. In order to prove the requirements that we have outlined, the veteran must submit documents to prove their veteran status. The first requirement for this documentation is that it must be one of the following forms, an original service department document, a copy issued by the service department, a copy submitted by an agent, accredited attorney, or service organization. The agent certifies that the document is an actual copy of the original, or that it is a copy of a copy of such a document. The second requirement is that the document have the following information, the veteran's length of service, time of service, and character of service. This information is normally proven by showing the veteran's DD-214. The DD-214 is the official Department of Defense form that veterans receive when they complete their active duty service or term of enlistment and will have all of their required information listed on it, in addition to other basic information about the veteran and any awards and medals the veteran may have received. For more information, check out both the Department of Veterans Affairs website at www.va.gov and the William & Mary Veterans Benefits Clinic website at law.wm.edu slash veterans. I also encourage you to watch the next video in this series. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.